Advancements in medicine have grown by leaps and bounds, but problems do still remain. Getting insurance companies on board and finding the right solution are often elusive and sometimes the medical community is simply stumped. Treya Klingel has dealt with this during her times in and out of the hospital since third grade. All of these problems hit their peak as Treya's birthday approached this year. My birthday, um, I was told, would be the last day that I was receiving um, the nor auricular ear stimulator, so my ear device. Um, it was, yeah, it was supposed to be the last day, and if it were the last time I would ever receive the device, there is no current other treatment that has been looked into to work. I was in third grade when I had my first cyclic vomiting episode, and I was in the hospital for about 13 days, and I couldn't eat, drink, or move, but I wasn't really diagnosed at that point. Um, they just thought I had really bad anxiety um, and weren't sure what was happening, and then I was put on medication for anxiety, and um, was kind of okay for a couple years, just had random like bouts of vomiting, and then the episodes of cyclic vomiting didn't get bad until um, I'd say like eighth grade. Cyclic vomiting syndrome um, presents very differently in each case. Um, in my case, like I said, it I cannot eat, drink, move pretty much for 13 days without violently vomiting. Um, it, there's still a lot not known about it, but um, some people think it's genetic. It was super frustrating and it's taught me that like the doctors, like if you ask a doctor a question and they're not familiar with something, um, the smartest doctors will say that they don't know and they'll get back to you and like research stuff and that's kind of the sign of a good doctor. But like the bad ones are the ones that like come up with an answer because they feel like they know everything. And so when I was doubted, it felt super isolating and alone and I felt like everything was my fault. I haven't had anyone like in situations where like doctors aren't believing them, like the symptoms that they have or like just being gaslighted in that situation where like the doctors are telling you one thing and then telling other people different things and you're just in this state of confusion. A lot of my friends, especially this year, I've noticed that my friends um, have really wrapped around and supported me. And me and Treya connect through humor, I would say, and like we connect through like joking and just having fun. So in one way I like at least have tried to support her is like trying to just remind her that she's still a normal person despite all of these things that have been going on and how Despite her sickness, and it's almost never ending, um, I try and remind her of who she is, in a sense, even though it's a short time we've known each other. So I genuinely believe that um, St. Paul's has changed my life and probably saved my life. I think if I were still living um, at home and didn't have this community, um, and this like encouragement of faith from my friends, I don't believe I would be alive today because um, a lot of being sick is like the will to fight and keep going and I don't think I would have that will. Um, I don't think I'd have that will if it were not for St. Paul's. I've been like, um, how I can look to Mary as like a model, because like Mary didn't suffer for Jesus, but she was there like while he was suffering. So it's kind of that context of how can I like, obviously Mary was the perfect support for Jesus that he needed, like, in that time when he was suffering. Um, so it's like, how can I take those elements of just, like, having an open and receptive heart, like, during that time? Then it became a question of, would I, would I want to stay alive only by those means? Um, and my answer before going to Texas was no, um, because it was not a life worth living for me, and I would rather be in heaven than live through what I had gone through for those bad two years. So Texas was my way to get out and see the ocean. Um, I really, really like the ocean, and um, there had been a lot of service trips, and I just love volunteering, and so I thought, like, what better thing to do than go to Texas and see the ocean? Um, and I think that that trip really kind of started to change things and my perspective. I was in the hospital and I think it was a couple days before my birthday um, and um, my doctor had come in and told me essentially that 
everything had been worked out, like my mom and my lawyers and everyone had kind of talked and I would still receive the ear device. Um, and what he said at the time was indefinitely. Um, and that was the best news ever. I would definitely say um, I've noticed some more like positive outlook on things because at first it was very, we were very unsure of her future, but now that things are sort of looking better, um, turns back to her like fun, goofy self, and we can make jokes about anything and just hang out and just be goofy young kids. <laughs> I like to think that I'm an advocate, and right now I'm not in school because of what we expected the health issues to be, and there are still that that those health issues, but we're doing a lot better and I'm not living in the hospital like I expected. So right now I get to be an advocate and I get to be a friend and support my friends through what they're going through. When I was younger, I was definitely known as the one who's in the hospital all the time, by my family, by my friends. Um, that was kind of who I was to everybody. And so being freed from just that personality or being boiled down to that, um, I like to make people laugh a lot. Um, I like to be loud. Um, I have a lot of hope for like my future. Um, I want to be an occupational therapist and so I want to work with kids with disabilities and so I get to be an advocate for those kids who have special needs and help them see that they're not just their disability and um, help them see their funny goofy side or their intellectual side or Whoever it is that they are, I'm really excited to help other people come out and be their authentic self. So Treya got her second chance at life with the approval of her ear device just days before her birthday. Since this video was recorded, Treya has been in and out of the hospital a couple more times for more health issues. But the experiences of this year have taught Treya two things, how to fight with joy and how to make the most of the time she has.